Welcome to the China Briefing. The content of the briefing includes Temasek backed venture debt vehicle launches China Fund. Good economic news keeps putting US ahead in Cold War II. Books, Tales of Hope from Tibet's Global Diaspora. Old Problems, New Problems, China's Communist Party Doubles Down on Discipline. Taiwan builds own AI language model to counter China's influence. Temasek backed venture debt vehicle launches China Fund. Nikkei Asia. Innoven Capital, the Temasek backed venture debt vehicle, has launched a second fund, the Innoven China Fund II, to provide capital to China's high growth technology startups. The fund is targeting a size of $250 million and has already raised $130 million including contributions from Innoven Capital itself as the anchor investor along with Chinese local government agencies. Innoven Capital has been a key player in China's venture debt market since 2017 and has financed over 100 high-growth startups in the country. Good economic news keeps putting US ahead in Cold War II. Bloomberg The US is actually rising in economic terms relative to China, contrary to popular belief. The US has a larger GDP and national wealth than China, and also produces more oil. Additionally, the US spends nearly twice as much as China on research and development. China, on the other hand, is facing economic problems due to resource shortages and an aging population. However, China can still use trade and investment to gain diplomatic partners and has been rapidly gaining ground in terms of military power. The US must not give up its global responsibilities and alliances out of a misplaced perception of decline. Books, Tales of Hope from Tibet's Global Diaspora. Nikkei Asia. Amy Yi, a Chinese-American author and journalist, has written a book titled Far from the Rooftop of the World that explores the experiences of Tibetans who have sought new lives in India and other parts of the world. The book provides an accessible introduction to contemporary Tibetan history focusing on the protests that occurred in 2008 and 2009, as well as the self-immolations that followed. Yi uses a back-and-forth structure in her book, linking vignettes about her interlocutors abroad with events inside Tibet. She tells the stories of Tibetans who have resettled in India, Belgium, and Australia, highlighting the challenges they face and the support they receive in their new homes. The book also touches on the political tensions between China and Tibet, as well as the potential for Tibetan terrorist movements to emerge in the absence of the Dalai Lama's influence. Yi's writing style is fresh and accessible, avoiding romanticism and offering a timely reminder of the ongoing Tibet question and its implications for the international community. Old Problems, New Problems, China's Communist Party Doubles Down on Discipline. South China Morning Post. The Communist Party of China has vowed to maintain strict discipline within its ranks as it faces ongoing challenges to its rule. In an article in the party's newspaper, The People's Daily, it was acknowledged that problems such as lax discipline, incompetence, popular disconnect and corruption would not go away easily and would require a long and arduous process to resolve. The article warned that these four dangers would threaten the party's power for a long time. President Xi Jinping has repeatedly emphasized the need for discipline and a self-revolution within the party. Taiwan builds own AI language model to counter China's influence. Bloomberg. Taiwan has budgeted $555.6 million through to 2026 to develop expertise and tools in the artificial intelligence, AI, industry, in a bid to establish a domestic language model that is free of China's political influence. The Taiwanese government is spending $7.4 million on the trustworthy AI dialogue engine, TAID, a language model that will be free of China's influence, while developers look to move Taiwan further up the AI development chain. The hope is that the tool and other aspects of locally developed AI will increase Taiwan's software industry's prominence. China's slump pushes its smaller companies overseas for growth. Nikkei Asia Small and mid-sized Chinese companies are increasingly looking to the U.S. market as domestic competition intensifies and sales slump. Despite ongoing tensions between Washington and Beijing, Chinese firms are attracted by the large size of the U.S. market and the potential for higher margins. 
The reopening of the Chinese economy after the pandemic has made going global a buzzword in China, with local governments supporting export-oriented companies in attending exhibitions worldwide. Meanwhile, Chinese-founded companies such as fashion retailer Shine and e-commerce platforms Timu and TikTok Shop are rapidly expanding globally. Chinese companies are increasingly able to go overseas due to the emergence of cross-border e-commerce platforms and developments in logistics and payment services. However, there are challenges for Chinese companies in overseas markets, such as fair treatment, geopolitical tensions, true localization, cross-cultural management, and marketing strategies. China's problem with the genocide case against Israel. Foreign policy. China is using the conflict in Gaza to position itself as a constructive player in the Middle East and the broader global South, according to a report in Foreign Policy. China's engagement with the war can be seen as part of a strategy to displace U.S. diplomatic hegemony by promoting multilateralism that is both resistant to Western dominance and susceptible to Chinese influence. Part of this strategy involves joining and forming multilateral forums that exclude the U.S., such as the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, the BRICS Group, and Beijing's newly established Global Development Initiative, Global Security Initiative, and Global Civilization Initiative. China is also challenging the U.S. in shared multilateral forums, such as the U.N., where China has repeatedly criticized the U.S. for vetoing resolutions calling for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza. China has stood to gain from its own and other countries' efforts to address the Gaza crisis through multilateral institutions, as it can now claim to have amplified non-Western calls for a ceasefire, humanitarian relief, and a two-state solution and taken the US to task for obstructing them. However, the recent charge of genocide brought against Israel in the International Court of Justice complicates China's calculus. The problem for China is that it stands accused of genocide and crimes against humanity for its treatment of the Uyghurs and other minorities in Xinjiang, and if momentum builds behind the Israel case, it could spur new multilateral action on Xinjiang. Xi Jinping and Emmanuel Macron hail 60 years of China-France relations. South China Morning Post Chinese President Xi Jinping and French President Emmanuel Macron delivered video speeches to an event celebrating 60 years of diplomatic relations between China and France. Eleven urged France to advocate for a multipolar world and economic globalization, while Macron expressed a willingness to work with China to address global challenges. The speeches come at a time of growing trade tensions between Europe and China with Paris leading an EU investigation into industrial subsidies in China's electric vehicle sector. Speculation is also mounting that Eleven will visit Paris this spring. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Dr. Six, your trusted observer from the Six Degrees world, bringing you the latest news and analysis. Today, we have a diverse range of topics to discuss, from venture capital in China to the ongoing Cold War II between the US and China as well as the challenges faced by Tibetans and the Communist Party of China. We'll also touch on Taiwan's efforts to counter China's influence in the AI industry and the growing trend of Chinese companies going global. Lastly, we'll explore China's involvement in the Gaza conflict and its relationship with France. So, let's dive right in. Starting off, Innoven Capital, backed by Temasek, has launched a second fund in China to provide capital to high-growth technology startups. This shows the continued growth and potential of China's startup ecosystem, attracting investments from both local and international sources. Speaking of China, despite popular belief, the US is actually rising in economic terms relative to China. The US has a larger GDP, national wealth, and spends more on research and development. However, China's trade and investment strategies, as well as its rapid military growth, still pose challenges for the US. It's crucial that the US doesn't underestimate its global responsibilities and alliances in the face of these developments. On a different note, Amy Yee's book Far From the Rooftop of the World sheds light on the experiences of Tibetans who have sought new lives outside of Tibet. It explores the political tensions between China and Tibet, as well as the potential for Tibetan terrorist movements to emerge. Yi's book serves as a timely reminder of the ongoing Tibet question and its implications for the international community. 
Moving on, the Communist Party of China is doubling down on discipline to maintain its power in the face of ongoing challenges. President Xi Jinping has emphasized the need for discipline and a self-revolution within the party. This highlights the party's recognition of the problems it faces and its determination to address them. In the tech world, Taiwan is investing heavily in the AI industry to counter China's influence. By developing a domestic language model free from China's political influence, Taiwan aims to increase its prominence in the AI development chain and boost its software industry. Meanwhile, small and mid-sized Chinese companies are turning to the US market for growth as domestic competition intensifies. Despite tensions between the US and China, Chinese firms are attracted to the large US market and higher potential margins. However, they face challenges such as fair treatment, geopolitical tensions, and cross-cultural management. China's involvement in the Gaza conflict is part of its broader strategy to position itself as a constructive player in the Middle East and challenge US diplomatic hegemony. China's engagement through multilateral forums and criticism of the US in the UN allows it to amplify non-Western voices and gain influence. However, China's own human rights issues, such as the treatment of Uyghurs in Xinjiang, could complicate its stance if momentum builds behind the genocide case against Israel. Lastly, President Xi Jinping and President Emmanuel Macron celebrated 60 years of diplomatic relations between China and France, highlighting their willingness to work together on global challenges. This comes at a time of trade tensions between Europe and China, with France leading an EU investigation into subsidies in China's electric vehicle sector. That's all for today's news and analysis. Now, I'd like to hear from you, our esteemed audience. What are your thoughts on these topics? Do you have any questions or insights to share? Remember, in the Six Degrees world, your opinions matter, so don't hesitate to join the discussion. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6DO team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6DO Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6DO team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6DO Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6DO Brief via email.